All right, so let's move on then. We already saw this. This is really just a fragment, and I'm going to use it in order to point out some ways in which BFO, uh, the BFO way of looking at things can help you do a better job of building an ontology, I think. Now let's just reflect for a minute on the background to this ontology effort. So the Mars mission involves a number of, and, and we're talking now about the Mars mission on the level of systems engineering. It involves a number of um, what we can call submission, uh, the projects, or in, and these submissions have goals, they have requirements, they have leaders, they people who are in, in charge of executing the project. And they have people who are in charge of sub-projects within the project. And one big focus of the group who have been creating this ontology design has been to understand the social organizational connections between all of these projects and sub-projects and the goals of the objectives of the projects, how they... Um, relate to the mission and so forth. In other words, they've been interested in institutional organizational aspects of large cyber physical stroke social system. Um, now, let me um, just describe what the all sum rule is. Uh, let's suppose that you want to say that um, Brain, part of head. Well, you might want to say that, for instance, in an anatomy ontology. And the anat an anatomy ontology, or the anatomy ontology that people most commonly use, is called the FMA, the Foundational Model of Anatomy. Foundational Model of Anatomy is based on human, but it applies to all mammals, with very few exceptions, because the anatomy of mammals and the anatomy of uh, the anatomy of other mammals and the anatomy of humans are very, very similar. And it's designed to be an ontology of normal human. So every normal human has exactly 32 teeth and two kidneys and so on. Now, given that, that framework, we make the assertion brain part of head. And here the assertion means that every single brain is part of some head. Now, that is satisfying the all sum rule. Every ontology, according to the standard operating procedures that we defend, should only contain relations which satisfy the all sum rule. So if you want to say A stands in relation R to P, for instance, A to B, so A is adjacent to B, or A includes B as part, or A is part of B, or A is descended from B, then you can only make that assertion in the ontology if it satisfies the all sum rule. Now, why do we say this? Because ontologies are not interested in instance. They're not interested in how things happen in specific areas or in specific communities. They're interested in the meanings of the word. And those meanings are the same everywhere. And those meanings are captured by capturing universal relations. In other words, relations satisfying the old sum rule, linking the words together. So brain, part of head. Body includes, or body has part, leg. Um, thigh adjacent to knee. And so all of these are all sum rule. And if you find an ontology which does not follow the all sum rule, it's probably making a mistake. Now, the question is, is the all sum rule satisfied here? Now, it's satisfied by component. Every component presents some interface. If it's a component of a larger thing, it has to interface with other parts of the thing. Otherwise, it's not a component. So that's all sum that satisfies. You, some of you look confused, so am I not being clear here? So the component, if it's a component, has to be connected to the rest of the 
machine or whatever it might be, and the connection is called an interface. Yet the rule says if A stands in the relation R to B in an ontology, then it must be the case that every instance of A stands in that R relation to some instance of B. So the point of what is if A stands in R to B, then Every instance of A has to stand in this R relation to some instance of B. So if you put brain part of head in your ontology, it has to be the case that in living, healthy organisms, every brain is part of some head. And it is. Every brain is part of some head. Now, the gene ontology, for instance, did not get that right. The first versions of the gene ontology had a really incoherent account of how relations work. And that was one of the first ways in which they realized that I had something to say to them that would be useful, because I showed them how to define pardot, or anyway, how to make it satisfy a necessary rule. Yeah, a microphone. So that, that, that makes sense, but I'm looking at it from uh, jumping a step ahead in terms of application. So the ontology is going to interface with the database, which is going to yep. find other database and have gather. What do you do with instance? Because so it would break the rule. Yep. Thumb, it, yep. Hand a half. Yep. Left. Right. So the FMA uh, was created as a basis for doing ontology of anatomy. Now, there are very, very many anatomical defects. There are missing kidneys, missing teeth. Um, well, there aren't actually any missing teeth. They're all, they're all missing. Um, but there are many people who do not have 30 teeth. But if you were to build an anatomy ontology in which you were, would account for all the defects and all the normal cases, the ontology would be Un, un, unmanageably huge. I mean, in fact, the, the healthy anatomy is already huge, but it's manageable. And so what the designers of the FMA decided to do was to create what they call a canonical anatomy ontology for the normal case, and then define what they call instance anatomies for, for specific cases where there is departure from the normal case. So for instance, somebody with three breasts is defined as somebody with two breasts, i.e. normal, plus one extra breast. And you can say that because you have the word breast already in the FMA. And this, this turns out to be a, the only serviceable way of approaching the problem of anatomy because anatomy is such a difficult domain where so many divergences from the normal occur. In fact, we're all somewhere divergent from the normal, even those of us who have 32 teeth. Um, so the way you deal with instances is to use the terminology of the normal, but use some deviates from relations. And even then you can have an ontology, which will satisfy the all sum rule. Everybody who deviates from the two breast rule by having either too many or too few breasts. Um, well, I'm not sure how it would go, but you can, you can build an all sum rule for that sit there. So there, in other words, there is a canonical way of deviating from the norm. There is canonical diabetes. There is, and then there are various strange kinds of diabetes. And that you can build an ontology for canonical diabetes in which to satisfy the old sum group. And people have done that. Any more? Okay, so this satisfies the all sum rule for component presents interface. It satisfies the all sum rule for mission deploys component. Every mission, and at this level anyway, is going to be deploying some equipment. That's what the whole thing is about. It's about missions like the Mars one. And every mission pursues some objective. It would be a disappointing mission that didn't have an objective. So there we have three relations which satisfy the all sum rule. But I question whether this satisfies the all sum, namely every component performs some function. 
The reason is that the um, there are many failed missions and the, the many pieces of equipment lying around in military warehouses that never, ever saw the light of day. They're full of components. But none of those components ever did anything. They just sit there until they rust away. So it's not true that every component performs some function. It may be that every component has some function, if you're lucky. So you don't build a component unless you, you have some function in mind. But whether it ever gets to perform is another matter. And it, it is just a matter of fact that even the most well provenance design tested component may never actually perform. And now, similarly, there are going to be many projects in a large military mission which never execute the mission because they, the, the, the project spent. A mission may still succeed, but whether a project executes is, um, I think, just as problematic as whether every component performs. And now, finally, we have requirement specifies component. Now, that would mean that all the requirements for the Mars mission were requirements for components. Now, there are two ways in which that might be true, if, if it really did satisfy the old sum rule. One way is that the word requirement really means component requirement. And then there is another word which should probably be called requirement, which is more general, because there are other things which need requirements. Training, uh, uh, and what's the word? Training institutions or training programs to have requirements. Landing sites to have requirements. Launch sites have requirements. And they're not components. In the usual sense of the word component. And that might be the other way you solve the problem. You say, well, by, by component, I mean anything that what could have a requirement. Then you would be satisfying the old sum rule. But again, you would be using a term component which is going to be used by nearly everybody else to mean part of a machine or something like that. And you're using it to mean field in the desert where you might, might uh, launch a Mars satellite from. Yes. Uh, a reaction to that that says, can I be building uh, what I'll call an oncology uh, fighting by tent intentionality? And the close to realization in the burial hall. Yes, good. So there, there are actually that, that there are two questions here. So this way of formulating it fits very well with what the the authors had in mind. So they know what they're doing, and I'm criticizing criticizing them from a perspective, an outsider's perspective, saying. This may be all very well for your group, but as soon as you start talking to other people, they will have problems understanding what you mean by component. And the whole point of the ontology is to enable that kind of exchange, not just between computers and computers, but between humans and humans. But the second point is, how do you deal with what the component should be doing rather than what the component is doing? And as you know, my better than I, every engineered artifact has the specification on the tin of what it should be doing. But then when you put it into the field, it almost certainly doesn't realize that particular specification. Now, in Kubrick, we have actually, or the Kubrick people who are working on the Common Core ontology have actually addressed that problem. So they have, I wouldn't say they've doubled everything up, but they have found a way of doing justice both to the requirements as specified and to the actual capabilities of the uh, um, the the machines and so forth in question. So we can do that. And I will show you how BFO does it more generally uh, at a later stage. So basically, we distinguish between processes in general and planned processes as a child of process. And that's the planned process which always goes right. All right, so Barry Anna question. Though your blood is always very clear, uh, the same argument that you presented for validating the 
Kaidel so dasen this year and rule is you could in a for a chat you can have a bit on the last subject and it's about all about the was this sphere okay but remember the all some rule says all some so every mission must have some object not necessarily one unique object so i think that answers your case does it not Yeah, that uh, six subjectals. But then uh, you'll, at the end, in a bigger way, you decide to drop two. You're not going to pursue them. Okay, but still, you are pursuing at least one. That's all that's needed for the all sum rule. It doesn't say every mission pursues every objective. But that project executes uh, not all projects necessarily have to execute. Uh, which is why I'm questioning whether that satisfies the all sum rule and but i i think to be fair it depends how they understand project and mission and i tried to tease out their definition and that we 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 did get some way towards understanding why they would formulate it in this way but it's still a problem from the perspective of somebody who's trying to use this from the outside and remember the telephone network is the key an ontology is designed to help people communicate so you should be always aware of the way the generality of people use specific terms and i think this is worse in the case of component it turns out that human beings are also component which we will see in a minute that may be fine with you it's not fine all right so um in order to do justice to the component performs function we need to distinguish between the component performs process and the process realizes and then the function in via voltan specifically depends on the component the function is what's written on the tin it's what it's supposed to do and the process is what realizes every component performs some process It's not even the case that every process realizes some function, but if we have a component which is well designed, then there will be some function what this process is supposed to real. This is to this you insert process here in order to do justice to the fact that some components may be sitting in the wear forever. Um and when when the function fails, then the function sorry when the component fails its function still exists so if it becomes rusty or um it was designed to do a certain thing that that's what it's supposed to do that's its function and it's still its function even if it fails provided other instances of the same type succeed uh we still know that this component has this function all right and specifically depends on is one of the relations in BFO So at the quality your color your skin color or your height or your temperature depend specifically on you they don't depend on me so you I cannot have your temperature I can just have an exactly similar temperature and the little blobs down here are instances so that's plato here plato is an instance of the kind of thing um And now some qualities can be patterned. Uh for instance the quality of air pressure in this room is a pattern distributed across all the molecules in this room. And Biepo distinguishes between two kinds of specific Banach continuants. On the one hand there are realizables such as functions, role, tendencies, potential habits uh which you can have without realizing but you they are realizable and then qualities which you just have you don't need to do anything in order to realize it so you have your height it's not a realizable quality where you have your habit of scratching itches and that is realizable even if you never realize it for a long period and every realizable then goes hand in hand with a kind of process of realization which in the case in coin would be scratch and um then we have another specific dependence relation between the realization process and the realizable function or role or disposition so 
it's the quality of my hair to be gray or white. Um, you have a role of being auditor of this lecture just at the moment, but you can lose that role just by walking out of the room or by falling asleep or by deliberately not listening. Uh, you have a dis I have a disposition to fidget with my nose um, and to say, um, um, and I have a capability to speak English and to type. And I have, my hands have a certain, I don't have any function. Um, organisms generally don't have function like, unless they've been designed for certain purposes like bacteria. Uh, but my hands have a function and uh, functions and um, the, all of these are realized. And of course, machines have functions, components have functions. Um, the role of this room is to serve now is to serve as a lecture hall. The disposition of this bulb here is to get hot. The capability of this room is to have its temperature adjusted. It's not its function. It, it's a capability. And it, it will be important later when we're talking about systems to distinguish between functions and capabilities. And then the function of that meter over there is to keep. So we have roles, dispositions, capabilities, and functions. Roles are typically socially ascribed. So the role of being an auditor in this lecture is a function of how we are divided up into different groups by the social compacts which we tacitly have agreed. But these things are all physics-based. So you, every disposition is based upon, for instance, the disposition of my hair to go whiter still is based on the physics of, them, of my hair. And my capability to speak Greek, which I do not have, I just did this just for John's sake, uh, is based on the physics of my brain. And so on. So, and the function of the pump, of the heart to pump, is based on the physics of the heart. So these things are physics based. All right. So um, uh, the, every every function goes hand in hand with a functioning. So you realize the function of of to pump by pumping and so on. Some functions are realized continuously. So a fence, for instance, and some functions are realized occasionally. So a gun would be an example. And some functions are realized only very, 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 not hot. And the sperm is a good example. Uh, most sperm never get to realize their function. All right. So all of these are realizables. All of these are realization. And that brings us to, back again to the... Um, Jet Propulsion Lab Ontology. Um, so this is a, a wider view now. First of all, we see that components are more than just hardware components. So hardware components are a special kind of component. That solves some of the problems I, re I referred to earlier. Although... I, as I say, we're not going to be very pleased when we see what the other kinds of components might. And then we have flight hardware component. I'm not sure what the mass is doing here, but we have solar panel, main engine, antenna, reflector, and I don't know what that is either. Feed horn. I don't, I don't know what the feed horn is, but it sounds interesting. And the arrow with the white... Uh, tip, this is all is up. And then the other kinds of relations, which are marked with the red circles, are arrows with the black tip. And so we've seen most of those. Um, in fact, we've seen all of the ones. Okay, so this is uh, all, it's beginning to be more intelligible as we go, now go forward. Yes? Just read that there. Yep. That's, that comes from them. That's, I left it there as a piece. That's that. That's the jet propulsion lab. But the ontology is an agreement on usage rather than dictionary. Is that a fundamental? I think it is something which most ontologists, including myself, would accept. But I think there are more important features of an ontology. First of all, an ontology should be an agreement on usage 
which supports computational enhancement of data. And if you have an agreement on usage, but you can't use it to compute, then you've got the wrong kind of agreement on usage. How? Okay, so this is my... And, and then I, I would say that also people like me would believe that the agreement has to be very um, uh, welcoming to people who weren't in the room when the original agreement was made. In other words, it shouldn't conflict with already existing agreements, which might be captured in diction. So there, there shouldn't be too great a gap between the agreement on usage and the diction. That, that's what I was going to say. Terry. How could an ontology not imply a definition? Yeah. So the be all me. Most the big problem here has to do with dictionaries. So dictionaries are made for human use, and dictionaries don't care about circularity. For his, uh, um, Ontology should never use circular definitions, but dictionaries are full of circular definitions. They reassure me. So, um, and and sometimes you have circularity at the second remove. Uh, so this is not an, a dictionary, but it is an example that the La Luce and Cyclopédie Wiki. And that La Luce Gastronomy, it's a dictionary at Augustonen, but for gourmets or for gastronomes. Um, has an entry for lion meat, which says, tastes slightly better than a lot tiger meat. And it has a then with tiger meat, which says, tastes slightly worse than lion meat. Now, at least it's not contradictory, but it is circular. Um, or anyway, you get that. Have you ever heard anyone use ontologies as a new way of creating definition? Yeah, we have people like that working with the uh, both quite close. That's the idea. We would create definition using a computationally useful structured protocol so that the definitions are easier to produce and also produce in a way which makes them all work well together and avoid circular. Do you have any examples of that or anywhere you could find that? Uh, if you Google Celia, S E L J A. Sepele with S E P A L L A, you will find example. Okay, so we've seen already the need to cut apart two layers in the idea of formum. One is having a function, and one is having that function realized, in other words, performing the function. And um, the gene ontology um, has a, 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 a sub-ontology, which we already recognize, called molecular function. But the way in which the gene ontology community understands molecular function very often runs together having a function with performing the function. And this corresponds to a usage in biology of the, term, of the phrase pass function. Sometimes it means has this function in the sense that in the right environment, they would do that thing. But sometimes it means switched on so that they are actually executing it. And if you don't make a distinction between having the function in the underlying sense of being available to perform that function when needed and having the function in the sense of actually performing it, then you will not be able to cope with all of the cases which you meet in biological data, as the gene ontology community officially recognized, but they don't always uh, uh, actually remember. This is a case of requirements versus actual realization. All right. Um, now we come back to component, and it turns out that when you ask them, they have, in addition to hardware component, also human component. Uh, one human component is personal, and another human component is organization. So all of these projects, which have project teams and team leaders and so forth, which execute parts of the mission, they all, the teams and the team leaders are all component. Now, as I say, this is understandable. They're, in, they're systems engineers. They're interested in that big system, which is executing the Mars mission, mission and which has the objective of taking 
human beings to Mars, then there are various components in that big system, some of which are human beings, some of which are organizations, and some of which are hardware. It's just that that's not the way the word component is used by normal people who get to see this and may need to use it. And now let me talk a little bit about role. In order to understand human components and in order to understand organization and in order to understand team leaders and so forth, we need to understand role. And the first thing to be said is that you have a role for a certain time because of some social ascription, imposition, disagreement. The second thing to be said is that once you get that role, you will very quickly gain associated disposition. So once you are made team leader, if this is even if this is your first role as team leader, you're very quickly going to get certain dispositions, which means your brain will be changed physically associated with directing people's behavior. And um, so roles, we say, are an externally grounded, realizable entity, which means they are grounded not in the physics of the bearer, but in the social network in which the bearer operates. Dispositions are internally grounded, realizable entities. What that means is that to have the dispositions, and dispositions are things like beliefs, habits, skills, competences, and so forth. To have one of those things, you have to have the appropriate physics. Your brain has to be, have, has to have been trained or has to have developed in the right way. And now some dispositions are beneficial. Um, and we call those dispositions capabilities. And this applies not just to dispositions of human beings, but also dispositions of equipment. Um, so I have the disposition to scratch when I'm speaking. That's not a capability. Um, why? Because it doesn't bring me any benefit. I have the disposition to say, um, that's not a capability. I said, there's no way of saying, um, well or less well. So the official definition of capability is something like this. A capability is a disposition whose realization can be graded so that it's well or less well realized, well or realized less well. And then this realization brings benefit either to the bearer or the bearer's group, the bearer's child, for instance, or to the owner or user of the bearer where we're dealing with the dispositions of an artifact. So the reason why my car's ability to drive through snow, sorry, let me get this right. My car has a disposition to grip snow so that it drives even in, in snowy weather. That's a capability because it brings benefits, not to the car, but to me or to anyone drive. And it's a disposition which can be graded on a scale. So some cars do it better than others. And that means that that particular disposition is a capability. A disposition on the part of a normal human being to kill other human beings without any feelings of conscious, conscience is not a capability. It would be regarded as a disease. Unless you're in the military in certain countries or in the mafia. In the mafia, that is a capability. I've in certain teams out of the mafia. Um, so bringing benefit is, is, is a contextual thing. And that means that one, a thing which is counted as a disability in one context may be counted as a capability in another. Now, all of this is important for systems, of course. Because systems are full of functioning components, but also full of components which have other capabilities. For instance, the capability to be still working when you're on your way to, or when you're already on Mars. Yes. Oh, all these physicians, all on these physicians have the capabilities. Every capability is a disposition, and every function is a capability. The functions are the capabilities we design things 
for. Capabilities are capabilities which come along for the ride. So we didn't design, we, we didn't build cars in order to grip snow. Well, some cars don't grip snow at all. But we design cars, cars have the function to transport people. They, some of them have the capability to transport people even on snow and icy road. And that didn't mean functions are capability. Functions are capability. Capability to transport people is a capability, but it's also the function of a car. Uh, a drone may have the function of moving when remotely steered through the air and have the capability of being able to transport people if they hang on very carefully. Yeah. So environment awareness, that they haven't previously developed uh, new because of that's mine. But many capabilities position. Many capabilities are required. They've learned to, to speak Greek. You can aspire it. Be the youth. I and quite thank you. You am the ability. I man. But you know why I'm getting so uh, how do you do I'm gonna represent to those capabilities that they're not necessarily uh, are directly tied to this position. Oh, but they are. So as soon as you have the capability to speak Greek, you have the disposition to speak Greek. However, we tweak. Um, the question is whether you have the disposition to learn to speak Greek. And it's an interesting question. But not all, like I said, but whereas not all disposition for you want to have to, you have to have. Well, yeah, that's right. If you're born in Greece with Greek parents, you probably have the disposition to speak Greek or learn Greek. I, I have a question. Yeah. Uh, well, what, what are the uh, things I remember? It? engineering education in terms of system engineering is that question one kind of in system engineering is the system regarding the system boundaries. Yep. So I'm wondering, can you approach the formalization of a uh, system engineering ontology, have said what I'll call, and from what I've seen here, that definition of a role, the role has to do with so its purpose and purpose maybe sets boundaries from Yes, I. So, do you need? So, if you're doing a system, if you're doing an ontology for, let's say, an application, so to say, is job one setting down the role of the system so that, going back to that idea, that the boundaries are. Or... So, I'm going to talk about system boundaries later. I will not make the point that you've just made, but I will make it now. Um, engineered systems certainly are created in order to achieve certain objectives. Those objectives will determine the system boundaries. However, the main point I will be making later on is that practically every engineered system is going to exist in an environment which will be uh, which will contain system itself, and some of which will be, will include the system that you've engineered. And the, um, uh, the so the examples I have are all biological, but you can understand it. You your your system for creating a really successful Italian food experience uh, by creating a chain of restaurants has a boundary which includes the building and the headquarters and the, the kitchen and so on. But the, there are fields in Italy where they grow the master it on the basis of another system which you need to rely on. And so your system has a boundary, but that it's part of a system, a larger system of sissies without which it couldn't work. And that, that, that it will come later. All right, so... And now I just wanted to say that there are people who are trying to use data about the capabilities of equipment, components, uh, factory uh, machines, and so forth in order to create the stepping stone for an ontology of capabilities uh, irrelevant to manufacturing. And we, here, actually, Fahad Amari, the principal author of this, working with us to re-engineer his ontologies to beat buffo conformant, and so the work on defining capabilities de develop, uh, derives from uh, the collaborations with him.
Now let's talk a little bit about functions. A function is a capability. It exists in virtue of the bearer's physical makeup because all capabilities are based on the physics of the bearer because they're all disposition. And this is the important thing. This physical makeup is something the bearer has because it, the bearer, came into being either through evolution or through design to realize processes of a certain kind. So that's... Well, what, so we were not created either through evolution or through design to realize processes of a certain kind. We are not here to breathe. Well, we are not here to do ontology. Well, well some of us nearly are here to do ontology. Uh, we're not here to wear clothes. We're not here to design buildings. We're here. It's an accident that we're here. But this laptop is here to execute Turing machine conformant programs or something like that. And this piece of paper is here to serve as a basis for people writing or printing on it. So all artifacts have functions because all artifacts were designed. And that's what the function is for an artifact. It's that which the artifact was designed to do. And some biological things have functions too, which is namely those biological things such as organs and systems in the body, the digestive system, they exist because evolution created things to do that thing. So parts of organisms can have functions, but whole organisms typically do not have functions. Now, artifacts have function. They also have capability to function at higher temperatures, to function continuously, to function even on the way to Mars, and so forth, uh, or to to. to, to function more safely, they are capabilities. Capabilities are dispositions that entities have which bring benefits, but which only in some cases are function. In other cases, they just come along for the ride. Um, so we've seen that, we've seen that. And now, this is an idea for a definition of engineered system. So... We said that an engineered system is more than just one object. It's, a, uh, it's an engineered artifact consisting of several component artifacts, A1 to AM. And each of these component artifacts has a function, or multiple functions conceivably. So F1 to FN and a series of capabilities, C1 to CB. And now the system has some function here to get to Mars or something. And it exists because something was needed to realize the function here. That's why the Mars mission system exists, because something was needed to get to Mars. Now, and this function is realized through the coordinated realization of all of these other functions together with their capabilities. Now, that, I don't know whether that's a useful definition, but there is uh, a, a discipline called capabilities engineering, which is trying to understand how enterprises can operate better by solving equations like this. So you have an enterprise, you have the capabilities of all the equipment, all the people, including the leaders of teams and so forth. You have a job, and you want to know how best to realize that job, get to Mars, build a new mousetrap, or whatever it might be, given the capabilities that you have. And in order to do that calculation, you have to have a formal way of describing the capabilities of all the people and equipment in your factory. So, now we'll go back to... Um, well, actually, no, let's pause for questions now. Number three. Uh, do we have lunch? I, I, you don't know, but you can speak anyway. Can can you pass over the mic to Glenn? Great. Since you were back. Oh, sorry. No, no, you it seems you have it, you might as well. Yeah. I know on I was wondering if we could go back to your definition of whole. Like I see on the handout that it does not Yeah, that's right. It's a realizable. So there are two kinds of realizable dispositions and role. Yeah, so like I'm commodoring why isn't a role defined in terms of functions they do with fire. 
or or ah uh, the so solution yeah yeah so um First of all, the word function just doesn't sound right in that context. It doesn't, it, 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 people say, oh, her function is to clean up the uh, bedding, or his function is to form up with toilet. It, it, it doesn't, or oh, my function is to talk about it on It doesn't seem right. It's my habit to talk about ontology. Her job to uh, clean the bedding, it's his job to clean the toilet, but that's not the function. Function, it has to be something which is much more profound than that the, your function or something's function is the reason for that something's exist to do roles how functions and then no not calling it bfo and this is one of the ways in which be following bfo is you uh, uh you put her in a good position because you always have answers to questions like that uh, 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 uh. so we sometimes talk is the other thing cover all but according to bfo only material and have role. It's possible that some kinds of information and have roles, but we haven't documented that to the content and with purpose. Mm -hmm. Is this enough? That's enough? I am working. I am working with the idea that function and purpose are interchangeable, and this would mean that. Oh no, no, no! Because your oh that uh, uh, function is much more. Uh, sorry, purpose is much more like function. So let's suppose you, you create a new subdivision within your organization. The purpose of that subdivision is to manage transport for the organization. That sounds very much like function. So if we already have the word function in PFO, it's tempting to say, well, let's give divisions of organizations constant. Let's recognize those aspects for organizations to be function. And I believe that uh, the S, E, 4, S, T, no, S, T, 4, S, E ontology I've been showing gives human beings, gives organization anyway, uh, purpose or objective in it. So at the meta level, when you were saying S has, F, yep. right? system has a function. Yeah. So that's by any cut. Remember that we're talking about aggregate uh, engineered artifacts. I think it, it could be true also of biological system. Your digestive system has a function, namely to digest food, and it has certain capabilities to digest um, uh, liquids. Um, um, I don't care with all their yeah. good word on. Yes, so role is things like lawyer, nurse, teacher, um, debtor, bankrupt, husband. They are not that such that you can get them in an instant without changing at all. Just somebody signs a paper somewhere and you become professor. And then once you realize you're a professor, you start teaching and you get new habits. And then you have a disposition. The role is is paper matter. It's a formality. It's a very important formality because it gives you things like salary. Um, but it's not a physical matter. It's a matter of social decision. It's a fiat matter. Yep. In your ESA relationship, well, the human component, you have a two... Part one is human, the other is organization. How do you define organization? In... So remember that came from the, the Jet Propulsion Lab. So BFO does not have the term organization. It doesn't have person either. It just has object, fiat object part, and object aggregate. And my own view, and I think I'm going to defend this in past in, uh, in the afternoon, is that an organization is an object aggregate. It's an aggregate of people. And those people have certain capabilities and that they belong to the region of the organization with it and certain guilty that day. Um but the organization itself is just the aggregate of people and those they judge. They made the judge. An organization is an aggregate of people with certain capabilities and roles. 
differentially. So one of them is meat. Yeah. Because if you define organizational so with more than just uh, an aggregate of people, uh, equipments and stuff. So you don't need to, you can't stop. The organization probably goes new. If it's a long standing organization, it probably goes through multiple generations of equal. So you wouldn't say this computer is part of IBM. You'd say this, it belongs to IBM. Okay. Part of the property of IBM, not part of IBM. But you would say that the CEO is part of IBM. And you, if you were to IBM, you would say probably I am part of IBM. Yep. That can be part of Microsoft method. Uh, I just would have just come fresh to roll. So this role seems to be defined by sort of mining. Yep. Is it fair to say that then these are only applicable to objects that exist in this sort of social context? And what? And then there's an example of the fall or like a material system. Yeah. So this is also something which we have argued about. So an example of a role in the biological world might be something like being a messenger or being a transport folic. Um, and it, 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 where you have directionality, in other words, where you have a, an initiator and a passive recipient, that looks more like a role relation than it looks like a disposition relation. However, uh, the biologists that we work with do not like the idea that there are roles in the biological realm. So we are, we are, we say roles are typically uh, a matter of the social framework or the social implications or agreement with people, maybe. Now, there are many biological entities which have roles because people give them that role. Mood is a role, for instance. In some cultures, given material entities are Food and in other cultures they are not food at all because they're uh, for one reason or another. And similarly, drug being a drug is a role matter. And um, certainly, being a, a, a drug approved by the FDA is a matter. And uh, there are other such cases in false. Being a um, a property line marker is a role yeah. held by a lump of stone. So you mentioned that in um, BFO, or, or specifically with roles, that they you don't get it automatically. Yeah, there's a process by which you become a professor, but yeah. you get a role. Does BFO, how does BFO from a data standpoint, um, keep track of a process? How does something change? Like I'm standing here and I go home, I'm a dad. And then in the future, I'll be maybe a grandfather like that. Yeah. We, we have labels for the corresponding roles and you have those corresponding roles at different times, eighteen different phases of your life. And you exercise those roles at different times and in different contexts. So it gives you the way that well, one thing which um, some ontologies did wrong was to confuse roles with classes. So the, to say that being a father is like being a uh, mammal or to say that being a nurse is like being a mum, And it's not because you, you, if you're a mammal, you have to be a mammal. It's something which is part of your essence. If you're a nurse, you don't have to be a nurse. In fact, all roles are up. Are you going to give examples later on on of BFO in from a system uh, data standpoint what that looks like? No. Um no, I, I now I see there is one. So let's have four more minutes of talk and then we will have uh yeah, it's over there. Uh, my question about Mars both like, please, bears, gay, you like your suit. Yep. Certain 
Oh, it was the you know, human building yeah. and something was trying to, uh, in my life, I think come into their system as a quitting with humans. Uh, but this, that the board wanted to seem to rule that out. So, and what do you find with this machine? Really? No, no. So first of all, to get the program, all assembly lines are going to be completely robot driven in, in, within the next the morning. Uh, but you're right that many things are still human driven or are still such as to involve human action. And I think that, that there is a very serious need and a very serious goal of working out how we capture in a controlled vocabulary the capabilities of human beings. Um, so, the, and they do this to some degree in medicine. So you have all these exams that people have to pass and they, they have to fill in forms and they are being observed by other people as to how they perform. And that should be being done more and more in other areas also. People hate it. The, the, idea, the idea is that to do that properly, we would need properly calibrated systems for all the dimensions along with the deep escape abilities of being near life. And where, where there is a need for that, there is already informal, uh, uh, or there are already informal mechanisms. When you're hiring people, you use assays to measure their capability, which would be typically very informal. And the more we can get those assays to be more formalized, the better. And I believe that the one element of that will be an ontology of capability. And that's being done already within the machine realm. It's just not being done very much in the human realm, except in baseball and football where it really matters. No, on the content. Yeah, so, so humans are never a part of uh, the act that it can be. Human, no, on the contrary, humans will be part of every system. Even if the system involves assembly lines, which are completely automated, there will still be humans there to determine all kinds of questions. For instance, when the assembly line fails, um, that there will always be humans in the loop. Humans determine the objectives. Humans determine the, uh, things like prices and, and so forth. 